So, now in a discrete sense I am also going to talk about another quantity called the robustness and then we will see how these two connect ok. Just hold on for a while we will talk about robustness if not today tomorrow we will see how they are connected ok. What is your uh, opinion or understanding about the word robustness? Because usually people let it be learned, not learned, engineers, scientists ok. People usually use these words in exchange quality, robustness, reliability, durability ok. Actually as a matter of fact durability is under quality hmm? that we will see what reliability is also under quality in one sense ok. Under quality means it is a subset ok. What do you think robustness is? Your opinion, your thought about? Hmm, someone was about to say something. Strength. Strength, eh? strength if someone is really sorry? Strength of a product that is robustness ok ok fine we will see ok strength of a product ok. If a product B is stronger than product A you think product B is robust than product A you think so <coughs> ok fine. Ah, how the product is performing in the different environmental conditions ok ok then efficiency. So, if B is efficient than A then you think it is robust than A ok. Anything else ok it is um, it can be any of this three answers or it could be a combination of that. But the one because but then you will have to alter what you told and you told to uh, but the one that he answered is very close to the actual perspective of what robustness is ok. What robustness says is irrespective of your variations in the input ok, my output can vary only this much allowed specification ok, allowed tolerance. There are n number of variables and they are going to vary that we understand that is what we saw. These are aleatory concept there is inherent randomness or it could be epistemic you might be able to control I do not know ok that is different. There is uncertainty they are going to propagate through the model there is a performance ok. Irrespective of the variability in your input my output variability should be minimal or it should be within the limits that I prescribe. Okay. So, this goes back to our example that if I am a two wheeler seller ok, I am a dealer and then I sell a bike to you motorbike and then I promise x kilometers per liter. You drive it and then you figure out that it is x minus 15 kilometers per liter and then what will you tell when you come for the first service? You are going to say that you guys cheated me. So, because it is heavily deviating from what we promised. So, the deal is then I ask you where did you drive it? So, you said that oh I actually drove it in Bangalore. Then if I say no, no, no this engine was designed to operate in Chennai. So, you can only drive it in the roads of Adayar or Velacheri. If you drive elsewhere we cannot promise this. Is that an acceptable statement? it is not an acceptable statement ok. So, for whatever reason I just gave the example of Bangalore ok, it could be anywhere else it can be Kashmir. So, irrespective of the temperature, irrespective of what kind of a rider you are, irrespective of what roads you have driven, irrespective of where you went and pumped your petrol, irrespective of any input condition that would influence the efficiency or the mileage of my vehicle ok your vehicle is expected to give minimal variation plus or minus of what I promised. I promised x kilometer per liter I understand plus or minus few kilometers is acceptable. If I give like uh, 50 kilometers per liter and I am giving only I mean my engine is giving you only 35 kilometers per liter you are going to be a heavily disappointed person ok. So, that is the key idea of robustness. This is more from a perspective ok. 
but how do you achieve it this is conceptual right but how do you achieve it okay irrespective of the variability in the input my variability in the output should be minimal or within the specification that i state that's one part of it the second part is you don't touch the cost for variation you still live with the cost for variation but you minimize the variation in the output okay that is the important part okay so for instance the dealer understood the variation in the uh, in the mileage was because of the roads in which you drove so can he say sir you cannot drive the vehicle in the gullies you can only ride the vehicle in the highways he cannot say that he should tune the engine to an extent that irrespective of whatever road you drive it should still give you close to 50 kilometers per liter so you cannot get rid of the source of variation you have to live with the source of variation but still make sure your output does not vary more than the specified limit so we will discuss an example here which will drive this point home okay so uh, here is a kiln k i l n kiln which means a furnace okay so you know these bricks okay so something like a brick is being made here that's it's called tiles okay so there is a burner okay and this is the wall of the kiln and these are the bricks or the tiles that are being you know how the bricks are usually done there is some molten mixture that is placed you know cut into cakes and it's placed and then it's burnt okay so here is a furnace it's an advanced stuff right so to make the problem little spicy okay what i've done is i say that this machine was bought out of germany or any other country don't worry about it it was bought out okay and you cannot touch the furnace okay because the moment you touch the furnace touch touch means you cannot make any changes in the furnace the moment you change it the warranty is void okay now there is a problem when people started using this uh, furnace what happened is the output tiles that came out were of irregular size if you see the tiles that we usually have is one by one one foot by one foot right so imagine you i give you 10 tiles to lay one is 1 by 1 by 2 the other one is 1 by 0.8 the other one is 0.8 by 1 okay so i give you tiles of different sizes you think you can lay it you cannot okay so this is something that we might not have really realized all these days so if you get down to the floor and then you look at them they are all in a very straight line okay actually if you observe them very closely there will be small deviations very small deviations will be there that's why they use the white color bonding material or whatever the tile color bonding material will be there so that you will not be able to see the difference okay but there will be minor minor the naked eyes when you stand and see you will not you will have to lay parallel to the tile and then you should see okay so the deal is this irregular stuff that we are talking about is much larger than that 0.8 and 1 is visual you can see in the naked eyes you can see the difference okay there is a problem the tiles are coming out of different irregular sizes right but i also know the cause for it the cause is because the tiles in the central part you know the tiles in the central part here okay uh they are exposed to a lower temperature compared to the ones in the outside okay so the ones in the central part experience lower temperature compared to the ones in the outer okay which means there is a temperature gradient there is no uniform temperature okay there is a burner and all that within and stuff but the way in which it functions is there is a gradient there is a gradient of temperature it's not a uniform temperature it's a gradient of temperature hence as a result the tiles when they come out they are of different sizes what do you think can be done to address this problem you cannot change the kiln because it is very expensive and you have bought it from germany 
you cannot go and change anything part of the uh, kiln because the moment you touch it it's the warranty is void these are the constraints yeah okay so given the assumption that you know the the gradient of the temperature what he says is let's remove this central one oh let's remove this central portion okay so that the bricks that are exposed to the low temperature are not you know they are not exposed at all i mean they are not there okay yes it is a potential solution but also remember that this is only a representative figure okay so let's imagine i'll i'll make make the problem slightly challenging okay imagine there are about instead of 3 there are about uh, 9 columns okay and then uh, 9 columns from a projection and 9 columns deep also so it is about an 9 by 9 so you have about 81 and uh, the central 3 represent the center so you are talking about uh, 3 times 9 27 so let's say about uh, 10 brick height or tiles high is what each column is then you are talking about 270 to 300 tiles less in productivity each time that you are you will have to open the furnace and close it which that is why you have gone to germany and bought this okay it's a very expensive stuff but it also gives you a very good productivity okay but that answer is acceptable but what i'm saying is you still want the full productivity right so you don't want to remove this one what else sorry alter the oh no no that you cannot do see basically this is like baking okay so you open you put the dough inside you close it you open and then you take the made out bread you cannot just open it in between and put some cherries and then close no once done put it then take it once it's done so uh, otherwise also it is not that easy to handle a hot brick okay and yeah, then it is symmetric. It is symmetric, so we can like mm. tell me, tell me. Can take one kind of properties and like we can use it. We can choose the <coughs> rows or columns, something. Mm. And do what? We can like easily like predict uh, uh, results. No, no, I know the results. Okay. I know that meaning. That is when I can do what he told, right? I know the temperature gradient. That's what. That's what, if you have noticed clearly. I use the word, assuming that we know the temperature gradient. I know that this is going to come out with 0.8. I know that will come at one. That one I know. Before coming out, you know that this is going to be 0.8. This is going to be one. This is going to be 1.2. That I know. But how do you deal with the problem? Because I want all of them to be of the same size, more or less. Uh, yes and yes or no. But what I am saying is, let us say it is yes. It is already there and with that you feel this problem. Okay. So, if it is no, fine it is no. With that you find this problem. Meaning you cannot change it now. If it is static, it is static. You cannot say let us go and rotate. No, you cannot touch the furnace. Oh, the other one will become even smaller. From 0.8, it will become 0.5. You won't know whether it is a tile or it is a stone. You understand what I am saying, right? When you increase, there is a gradient. The gradient will go like this. The gradient will only translate. Time. No, it will not. That is what I am saying. The gray, it, it will maintain the gradient for whatever reason. That is one way of looking at it. So, what he is saying is. 
since we know what is going to be the output size, why cut them all to the same size? Why will you cut all of them to 0.8 by 0.8? If you think that this guy is going to be larger than what you expect 1.2, then you cut it even smaller so that when he instead of being 1.2, he will become 1. Similarly, the ones which go in the center, you cut it of a larger size and then he will come to 1. Okay? That is an acceptable solution, but still you have to do some kind of a pre-processing. You need to understand, you need to correlate and then you need to, but that is an accepted solution. What else? Yeah, see in this whole thing, the solution that you give is, is fine, okay? but I also want you to understand an important underlying idea about robustness. Okay, that is that is coming in terms of the constraint. In another couple of minutes, you will understand what I am talking about. Okay, but I want you to appreciate that while you are trying to give the solution. Anything else? Any other solution that you can think of? Okay, so these are uh, fair enough solutions that you have given from a data perspective because that's all I have told you, right? But you can also go into the physics of the problem a little bit, which I do not expect, but it is a trivial thing if you look at it. You know how these bricks are made, what are the major components of the bricks and why, why temperature is going to influence the size, do you know? Because what I am saying is that is all right, the, the, what is the problem here? It says no uniform temperature. Why should the uniform temperature or no uniform temperature influence the size of your tile? What plays the role here? The temperature plays a role. What will happen if I am going to heat something? If I am going to heat something, what will happen? They will, they will contract. Eh? If you heat something, they will contract, is it? Depends on the material, right? So, but in this material, what will happen? Whether it expands or contracts, there is a property of the material that will play a role. What is that material? No, oh, sorry. What is that property? You told just now. It is a coefficient of thermal expansion. Okay. There is some material that might expand this much. There is some, some material that might only expand this much. Okay. So, how do I describe that using the coefficient of thermal expansion? That plays a role here. Okay. What it is saying is, there is a material, this is the coefficient of thermal expansion. Okay, but what is happening is there is a delta T that alpha delta T is what the term is, right? The delta T is large in the ones that are in the corner compared to the ones in the center. Hence, they will expand more compared to the ones in the center. Okay, one way to deal with that would be to check out what is the size and then do it. The other one will be to look at the material itself because the material that goes into it is, is your input. It is not part of the furnace. So, what I do is, is, if you know the physics of it, basically lime and clay are the material that go into it. Okay. So, what I will do is, is I will play around with the, uh, the composition such that the coefficient of thermal, because there are two materials, right? So, the third coefficient of thermal expansion matches the gradient. Okay. So, it will have a large coefficient of thermal expansion in the center and it will have a less coefficient of thermal expansion towards the end in such a gradient that it will match the temperature gradient. So, you can go ahead and do that, but this is also pre-processing only. You should know, you should do some experiments to understand how to do that. Okay. So, this is just an example to drive home the point on robustness. Okay. Now, let me ask you the question, what was the source of randomness in this or source of uncertainty in this, source of the error in this, sorry, the temperature, the temperature, the non-uniform temperature, right. But did you go and change the non-uniform temperature? Because I told you that you cannot touch the furnace, otherwise the first thing that you would have told us, sir, let us go and fix the burner. You cannot fix that, I told you that you cannot touch that. So, irrespective of the variation in the input, I expect my tile which is my output variation should be very less. Okay? I say 1 by 1, but I will accept 0.98 to 
1.2 i will accept that sorry not 1.2 1.02 i'll accept okay i cannot accept 0 0.8 and 1.2 i can accept 0 0.98 and 1.02 so the variation in the input temperature i have not addressed that at all it is still with whatever uh, solution that you gave and the one that i showed just now the the uniform temperature the non uniform temperature is still there i have not addressed that problem but still i am getting an output of my tiles which are one by one okay so that is the idea behind robustness okay you should minimize the effect of the cost you cannot touch the cost okay we didn't go and change the non uniform temperature but what you have done is what is the effect of the non uniform temperature it is it created or it resulted in tiles that are of that did not adhere to a 1 by 1 size so but however i have minimized the effect of the non uniform temperature which is the cost without controlling the cost itself in this case it will be the kiln design i have not touched that so this is the robust design principle you have to live with the uncertainties or you have to live with the cause of the variation but still you should be able to achieve your output which in our case is a variation okay which is specified variation or within the specification okay and this is also sometime called the parameter design or p design okay usually if you see there will be a block and they will have some factors that come into it and p meaning the factors are nothing but the parameter so the p stands for the parameter so it's called the p design so this is the underlying idea on robustness okay. now i what i'm trying to show you is a small pictorial depiction of the kiln example itself okay so there are uh, the first one is this initial distribution here you see this guy what it means is there is a mean okay average that we are talking about okay so this average that i am talking about is probably the 1 cross 1 that i am talking okay the area square meter or sorry square feet let's say 1 by 1 square feet okay what i am saying is if i were to draw this here let's say this is your tile dimension okay and then i'm taking the first tile and then i'm measuring what it was it was this much okay it's it's somewhere here and then i went to the second one it was here it was here it was here and then what does the height of this one mean it means there are multiple numbers at that level okay so if i did about 1000 tiles okay it is likely that this the number of tiles might be about 500 or 600 in this level and there might be some here like about 200 this might be about 200 this might be like that okay and uh, this is usually called the histogram okay it's basically a frequency plot how many times or how many tiles out of the total tiles measured about 1 by 1 okay how many of them measured 0.8 by 1 how many of them measured 1.2 by 1 okay then you can kind of i mean it's not straight forward but you can kind of come up with this that's what we have plotted here okay so what it means is there is a larger variation i have not given you any dimensions here the dimensions was just to motivate the example okay so what it means is this m is what your target is this 1 by 1 for instance is what the m is this is what is the promised target but there was a deviation in the tile dimension before the solution after implementing the solution again it's not that it's going to be a straight line still there will be variation but the variation is smaller this is how you measure the variation how thin or how fat that's not the correct word but for us to discuss here to enable the discussion okay this distribution is thinner compared to 
this distribution which is fatter. A fatter distribution means there is lot of deviation from what is promised or what is expected. Okay. Whereas, in this there is only a smaller deviation from what is expected. Okay. Which again means that there is more samples that is why this is a taller distribution. When it is a thinner it is also a taller distribution. Okay. But let us say that you have a magic machine which uh, lets you produce tiles of 1 by 1 dimension. How will this plot look like? It is just this straight line. Okay. If you had 1000 products, it will be 1000 by 1000, it is 1, that is all. Okay. Otherwise, I am saying there are about 800. In here, there are about 800 tiles were here. There are about 100 tiles in this area and there are about 100 tiles in this area and there are about 10 tiles here and there are about 10 tiles here. Okay. They will come as close as possible to your promise, but still there will be some variation. So, the requirement in any manufacturing or product. Okay. So, these are two different things when I say manufacturing is manufacturing of a product, but manufacturing ends by the time the user goes to the shop and gets it. Until then is what the manufacturer has control, the dealer has control. After that, it is the performance. Okay. That is why I said whether in manufacturing or product. When I say product, it is performance. When I say manufacturing, when it is with the dealer. And this is also one of the subtle difference that people point out is until I sell it to you, it is called quality. The moment you bought it from me, it is going to be how well it performed to your expectations or to my promise, then that is called reliability. How well it performs with you is called reliability and how well did I meet the specifications okay, until I sold it to you is called quality. That is a small distinction that people make, it is a subtle distinction. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> so, from did, are, are, are you fine with this explanation like uh, okay so usually you can draw it from a histogram you can get these uh, distributions if at all we are talking about that okay so another part what becomes interesting is when you want to measure the quality during design okay so all this time we were only talking about the geometry or the manufacturing tolerance and all that right so that is what is given here in terms of parameter versus performance Okay. Now, you need to talk about both performance as well as adhering to the specifications in terms of the geometric uh, conditions. right? So, that is what is the parameter and then the performance is what the reliability that we talk about. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, what are all the parameters that you need to worry about? Okay. In this one, for instance, in this particular example that we are talking about, there might be other parameters also that will play a role. You can, you can do further research to understand why there was a variation in this, did not I make sure like after 5 days, after 10 days, you might get a better understanding of the composition and you might be able to drive it even further. Okay. Or let us say that I relax one of the constraints, okay. like you can touch it, you can touch the burners a little bit, then you might be able to bring down the variation even better. Okay. So, you need to understand what the parameters are, which parameters play a role that becomes a very important stuff. And in order to do that, you need to have efficient experiments. This EXP stands for experiments to find dependable information on the parameters. Okay. There are different uh, ways or uh, mathematical techniques or statistical techniques to do that. If you have a bunch of data, today you can find out causal relationships you can use something called the principal component analysis, support vector, uh, singular value decompositions and things like that. These are all comes under something called factor analysis. They will tell you out of these factors, out of the 10 factors that you taught, only these two factors are very important. Then you can do the study representing only those two factors. 